In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a piece of cover art for an album or a single using Adobe Photoshop. Welcome to my channel, my name is Vicky Balfour and here on my channel I post epic violin covers of mostly gaming and anime soundtracks and I create tutorials like this on how to release music online as an independent musician. So if that sounds of interest to you, make sure to subscribe below for more content. Today I'm going to show you how I created this piece of artwork using Adobe Photoshop. You're going to learn how to make object selections, how to move, rotate and resize objects, how to tweak things like the brightness and colour of an image, how to add text and finally how to export your image. If you're interested in getting Adobe Photoshop, I have an affiliate link in the description below where you can find out more, get a subscription or even try out a free trial. Or you might be interested in getting the whole Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, which includes all the different Adobe software, um, such as Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what I use to edit my music videos. And you can check out my tutorial here on how to edit together a music video. Brilliant software, would highly recommend it. Right, let's get on to the tutorial. So, getting started in Photoshop. So I've opened up Adobe Photoshop here. You can start by either dragging and dropping an image file you'd like to work on here in the centre, and it will automatically create a project which has the same dimensions and resolution as the image you are importing. Or, if you want to specify the dimensions, then you want to go here to create new. There's a bunch of different custom options that you can choose from, but the one we are wanting to go for today is 3000 times 3000 pixels, which is a square image. And this is because it is the recommended image size for a piece of artwork for an album or single cover according to the digital distributor DistroKid. If you're interested in learning how to release your music online with DistroKid, I'll leave the link in the description below. So you can either select the custom size here, or you can specify what you want over here. So we can type in the width, so 3000, and we can type in the height, 3000, and we can change the resolution to 350 ppi. We can also change the bitrate if we want, up to 16 bit for the RGB colour, but you don't want to go any higher than that because some of the features will not be available for editing otherwise. So then click create to create our project. So this will start you off with a nice blank square canvas here. So in the right hand panel here, if we go down to layers, Click on this and you'll now be able to see the layers that you have in your project. At the moment we just have our background layer, which is just a plain white background for this empty project. If we now want to import an image to work with onto this canvas, we just need to select our image and drag and drop it into the project window. So now we have our image. And when you first import an image, you will be able to resize it using these handles here. Once you've got the right size that you want, we just go to the toolbar on the left hand side here and then select the move tool here. Now you will see that we have this second layer here. The little eye symbol, we can then click on this to hide the layer and we can click on it to unhide the layer again. Whichever layer is on top here in this panel will be the layer which is in front of everything else in your project window. So the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to make a selection. I just want the violin out of this image, I don't want the background. So I want to cut out this violin. So we first of all need to make sure that we are selected on the layer here. And then we want to go to this tool here. If you click and hold this icon, you'll see that we have three different options. So we have the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. So I'm first of all going to show you how to use the magnetic lasso tool and then afterwards I'll show you how to use the polygonal lasso tool. So let's select the magnetic lasso tool. So what we need to do is click on one of the edges of the violin and click and hold. Don't let go of the mouse. And then we're going to draw around the violin. And it's going to basically snap to the edges of the thing that you're drawing around. So this tool is really useful. It's definitely one of the faster ways to make selections, but it's not always the most accurate. Sometimes if your background has similar colours to the object you're selecting, it might select part of the background. So once you get back to the start, let go or double click, and you will now have this selected area. To just cut out this area, what we need to do is we need to right click and we want to go to layer via copy. This is going to create a new layer 
which is only this area that we've cut out. So if we now hide the original layer with the full image, we can now see the layer that we've cut out. And as you can see, there are some quite messy bits around here because the selection has not been perfect. So if you want to zoom in to look at these, you can either go down to your magnifying glass in the toolbar here to select the zoom tool and then click on the image to zoom in. Or you can do control plus to zoom in and control minus to zoom out. So you can see this is a little bit messy here. And if we go up to the top, you can see we sort of missed the side of the violin here. So the magnetic lasso tool can certainly be useful for some things. It can make selections quicker, but it's not always super accurate. So let's just hide this layer for just now and let's uncover the original layer. This time I'm going to show you how to use the polygonal lasso tool. So this time I'm going to zoom into the image so that I can see clearly what I'm doing. So control plus to zoom in. So let's start at the same point on the violin again. Now for this one you click, go along to the next point and then click again. This time you're not holding and dragging. You're basically clicking around the whole edge of the object that you want to select. And as you can imagine, this takes much longer, but it is much more accurate. It can be quite a pain for objects with lots of curved edges, but it's really great for objects with straight edges. Now, because you're zoomed in, if you just drag your mouse down without clicking, the image will automatically scroll down so you can see it. Then once you get back to the start, just click on the first spot or double click and then it will all join up for you and your object will be selected. So control minus to zoom back out. Here we have our nice selection. Now, as you can see here, I forgot to have the correct layer selected. So if I was to copy this selection just now, I would actually be making a selection of this image that I already cut out. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm selected on the layer of the original image here before right clicking on the image and doing layer via copy. So if I now hide the original layer here, we have this nice cutout of my violin. So the one thing I do need to check is up here by the tuning pegs. So as you can see here, there's this one little spot that I wasn't able to get. So I can now cut that out. So if I make sure that I'm selected on this layer here that I've already cut out, so layer two, I can now cut out this little area here. I just need to make the selection again and this time all I need to do is hit delete and it will delete that section there. Once you're done, to deselect, either right click and hit deselect or you do control D. So now we can do a bunch of different things with this image. So if I go back to the move tool, I can now move this violin around and I can also resize it if I want as well. To resize it, you need to make sure that you have clicked on the layer, you go up to edit, you go down to transform and then select scale. This allows you to now change the scale and it will keep everything in proportion. And if you then wanted to rotate the image, you go back to edit, transform and this time select rotate. So if you now hover your mouse over one of the corners, you can click and drag to rotate your image. And then once you're done, just go back to your move tool. So I'm just gonna undo that just now and hide this layer and we're gonna come back to that later. And I'm gonna delete this messy one here. So to delete a layer, just right click on it and select delete layer. If you wanted to duplicate the layer, you also have that option here too, but I'm just gonna delete this one. So now I'm gonna import my next image that I want to use. So here we have my other violin. And now I'm going to make a selection of this violin here using the polygonal lasso tool. So again, make sure you're clicked on the layer and then right click and layer via copy. And you can hide the original layer. And you can see here that we have a nice violin with slightly jagged edges because I was rushing a bit there, but never mind. So again, I'm just going to fix this section at the tuning pegs and delete the bits I've missed. So that is one of the benefits to using the magnetic lasso tool instead. You don't get these jagged edges. So back to the move tool, which is also V on the keyboard. Let's hide this and then bring in my final image. So yes, I've got three different violins and the reason I'm using all three for this cover art is because the song has three different violin parts in it. So I'll now do my selection and cut out this one too.
So you can move these layers here by clicking and dragging to reorder them. So I'm gonna move my cutout violins and let's make them all visible. So I can now move these about and you'll see that this layer that is at the top here is the layer which is gonna be on the top in your project. So if I wanted the purple violin to be on the top, I would drag that up here. But I think I'll put this one in the middle. So I can now resize, rotate and position these where I would like them to on the page. So remember you go to edit, transform and scale to change the size or to rotate if you want to rotate the image. Okay, so I quite like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the background. I don't want a plain white background. So I have a couple of different options I'm going to try. The first is adding in a black background. So this is just a black square image that I created in PowerPoint. Let's resize this so it fits. Move tool to deselect. And then I'm gonna drag this layer down so that it's behind the violins. Now I think I'd like to shift these violins down a bit. So what I can do is I can click on the first layer, hold the shift key, and then click on the last layer to select all three of them. And this allows me to move all three at the same time. So I can now move these down and have it more central. And then the other background option I have is the Scotch flag, which I also made in PowerPoint. So if I just stretch this to fit, and then I can put this in front of the black background. So I can hide this layer to bring back the black background, or I can unhide it to have the flag background. I quite like the flag, so I'm gonna leave it like that for just now. Next, I would like to brighten up the photos of my violin. So let's select this top layer here. Now we have a bunch of different adjustment layers here that we can use. So if I select the brightness contrast one, I now get this little pop-up box where I can tweak the brightness and contrast. This will affect every single layer below this unless you click this button here. This makes the adjustment layer only affect the one layer which is below it. So I'm going to select this so that I'm only affecting the middle violin. So I'm going to increase the brightness a bit and then you can also change the contrast as well if you like. Other things which you can do is you can change the colour balance for example. Again you can make it so it just affects the one layer. And this allows you to tweak all these different colours. So you can have more blue in your image if you wanted or more yellow. You could have more of a green tint or more of a pink tint or more red tint versus a more turquoise colour. So if you felt you needed to do a bit of colour correction this is how you would do it. And here you can also hide these adjustment layers. So if I wanted to take the brightness off, I would just click the eye and it's going to reduce the brightness back to the original again. So you can also copy this layer by hitting Control C and then you can select another layer to paste it onto and hit Control V to paste. If you want to edit the adjustment layer, then you just need to unminimize this little window here. And then if you want to make the effect specific to the layer, you need to click this button. So this one is now only affecting the purple violin. Again, we can change it so there's more or less brightness if we wanted to. So I'll now just brighten up the final violin and increase the contrast a little on this one. So the next thing we can add in is text. So to add in text, we want to go to our text tool here. So you can either have horizontal text, vertical text, or text with masks. I'm just gonna use the standard horizontal text. So just click anywhere on your project to start typing. It will be quite large if previously you were using a bigger document, so don't worry about that, you can change the size. So I'm gonna type in the name of the song, which is all Lang Syne. I'm gonna click off it, and then first of all, I'm gonna fix the size of the text. So I'm gonna bring up the text to the top, so it's in front of everything. So make sure that you're on the text tool and then click on the text before hitting Control T. And here we can change the font size. So Control A to select all, and then we can type in a new size and hit enter. So it's still a bit big there. The second way that you can change the font size is by going back to edit, transform and scale, and then we can resize the text visually. Now you can change the color of the font here. So let's try having it white. You can see it's disappearing into the background here. So if we now go to the layer tab at the top here, layer style, and then down to drop shadow, this allows us to add a shadow to the text. So the three main parameters you can change here is the distance from text, 
So you could have it really far away if you want it. I always have it directly behind the text. You can change uh, the spread of the text. This is how dispersed the shadow is. And then you can change the size as well. Once you're happy with it, hit OK. And if you want to change the drop shadow again, your drop shadow effect is down here. So you just double click on this to open it back up. And you can also hide the effect if you don't want the effect on and unhide it again by clicking the little eye symbol. You can also change the font of the text as well. So go back to your text tool or click T on the keyboard, click on your text and control A to select it all. And then you can select your font type here. I always use copper plate Gothic bold. It's the font I've been using for my brand. And so I'm going to stick with that. And you can also change, for example, the alignment. So I have mine centered. You can have it left aligned or right aligned. So I'm actually going to right click and duplicate this layer. Um, and for the second text layer, I'm going to have my name. And I want to make my name smaller than the text here. So again, edit transform and scale. And then I'll change the scale until the text is the size I want it. And then I spend forever deciding what color I should use for the font and then end up resizing it once more. So once you're happy with your artwork, you can go to File and then down to Export and Export As. This will bring up your export window here. So you can change the size of the image if you want. If you decide, for example, you need a smaller image size because you need to upload it somewhere that has a limit on how large the file size can be. But I wouldn't recommend increasing the image size at this point because you'll likely degrade quality if the images you use to create the artwork were not that large in the first place. And then you can choose which format you want it in. I just want a JPEG, quality 100%. And then it's a case of pressing export and choosing the location that you want it to be saved. And don't forget to save your project as well. So file and save as, just in case you ever want to come back and work on it again. And now you have successfully created a piece of cover art. Thanks very much for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments if there are any other tutorials which I could create on my channel which would be of help to you. If you're interested in getting Adobe Photoshop or are planning to get the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, please do consider using my affiliate link below. It's at no extra cost to you, but it really does help my channel out. Thanks again to my Patreon community for their support, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!